we are back. Hello everyone. Welcome to another Let's Play of King's Quest V. My name is Anna Mardal. Fun fact, could not get around the technical difficulty we experienced in the last video, so I basically just had to set up a new DOS box environment and start the game over. Um, not that you guys have to see that. This is where we were uh, uh, essentially before we uh, had to leave off. I think I did everything the same. Here's crossing our fingers. <laughs> so um, when we last left, we had, um, we'd gone through the forest, we'd uh, stopped the evil witch, We'd looted all her things, which meant uh, a golden heart for the tree princess, which gave us a harp, a heart for a harp. Um, we stole back the gold spinning wheel, which we used to get a marionette toy, which we traded for a toy sled. And we had gotten an elves shoes, which we gave to the shoemakers in exchange for a hammer. And now we are going to go visit the inn in the hopes of, I'll wait for you out there, out here. I don't like that place. In the hopes that maybe they can give us directions or, you know, tell us about the mountains or maybe sell us some food. I'll put the detail back up. Um. Huddled over the bar, Graham notices three rough-looking men deep in serious conversation. Since they're talking in such low tones, Graham can't quite hear what they're saying. A flea-bitten old dog lies asleep in the corner. The country tavern's the country inn's tavern looks a bit shabby and run down. At the bar, Graham notices three men. Well, let's go talk to them. Gentlemen, please excuse me. I didn't mean to interrupt your. The inn's full. Ain't got no more rooms. Hey boss, this guy looks like a real troublemaker. What do you want me to do with him? Rub him out. I don't, they're gonna kill me for walking in and saying hi. This is terrible customer service. Struggle as he might, Graham cannot escape his bonds. But the rat that we saved is going to help us. I told you I'd repay your kindness when you saved me from that horrible cat. Good luck, friend. Lying in a heap on the cold stone floor, Graham sees the rope that once held him captive. So let's pick that up. You can always use a lot of rope. Graham stoops down and picks up the sturdy rope from the stone floor. So this is a really good example of, I, I talked earlier about, um, there are parts in the game where you can just get stuck and with no idea how to proceed. If we did not have the cobbler's hammer, okay, we would get stuck here. We wouldn't get a game over. Nobody would come and get us. It wouldn't be some kind of hint for what to do next. You just don't proceed the game. And you would think <laughs> you, you've you got, Graham finds himself in the country inn's dusty, dirty cellar. You would think that with a barrel and a, and a broom and a, a shelves full of stuff and all these barrels, you'd think there would be something that would let you break off the rusty lock, securing the door, preventing Graham from leaving the cellar. But nope, you need a hammer. And there's no way to know that if you give shoes to the old couple in town, that they'll give you a hammer. You like <laughs> Using the cobbler's hammer, Graham pounds on the rusty lock until it breaks apart. And nobody hears that. It's amazing. The sounds of several men talking and laughing floats through the door. Graham looks around the inn's kitchen and finds it rather sparse and untidy. 
You would think you would want to leave as quickly as possible, but at the back of the room, Graham spies a large kitchen cupboard. Inside the cupboard, Graham sees a large juicy leg of lamb. Reaching into the open cupboard, Graham pulls out the savory leg of lamb. And we did, you know, come here to get food for our trip, so, so good. Graham unlocks the kitchen door before going outside. The Cedric has nothing to say about us being captured. That's fine. Um, there's one more thing that we need to do before we can leave Serenia. And that is, we still have to find a way to get around the poisonous snake that is preventing our passage into the Eastern Mountains. You may notice that the wagon is gone. It, it wasn't on the previous screen, it's not here now. A tambourine lies on the ground near the abandoned encampment. Not seeing the tambourine's owner, Graham bends down and rescues it from the ground. There's not a reason given for why they leave after you've had your fortune and it's time for you to move on with the game. And I don't suppose that they need a reason in, in a certain sense. Um, not everything should be because of the protagonist. People should just have lives and businesses of their own to deal with. But it pleases me to think that perhaps Madame Mushka and her um, friend or husband or a co-worker, whoever, whatever their relationship was together, perhaps she decided after having told our fortune and given us advice for how to handle a dangerous and evil wizard, she might have decided that it was a good idea to clear out of town just in case Graham fails and the wizard comes looking for somebody to um, vent his frustrations on, given that Graham has an amulet that could probably be traced back to her. Um, so I like to think that they decided to clear out of Dodge rather than hang around. And maybe they left the tambourine behind on purpose because they knew we would need it. I don't know. It's a thought. But uh, either way, whether they left because of reasons of their own or whether they left uh, because of us, we have a tambourine now. Frightened by the noisy tambourine, the snake reluctantly slithers away. That kind of makes sense. I mean, the snake um, looked like a rattlesnake and so rattling and making noise is how it makes... Uh, it communicates, so we're making noise that it doesn't understand, and it confuses it. So, okay, I'll buy that. A few hours later, Graham begins to shiver at the drop in temperature. Oh, and we have a little, a little hunched over cold animation. That's cool. Let's put our cloak on. Graham dons his cloak for warmth in the snowy mountains. I actually really like the few hours later, um dialogue there because it's not like um a lot of video games where you move from one screen to another and boom instant new ecosystem um this is actually kind of realistic in the sense of it, it actually took some time <laughs> to get from into the the, the snowy climbs from the 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 hills below. Graham notices his stomach beginning to rumble with hunger from the exertion of the mountain climb. Here's a good example of what I said earlier about how each puzzle oftentimes has multiple solutions, but technically only one of them is right and the rest of them will just make your game go longer before it breaks. We have two pieces of food in our inventory. We have the lamb and we have the pie. We could eat the pie now because we're hungry, but if we do, when we need the pie later, we will die. 
And you probably will have saved over all your saves at that point. You'll have to restart the entire game. Um, so we will eat the lamb. Graham finds the leg of lamb a bit tough, but tasty enough. Filling up quickly, he saves the other half for later. It's not clear what to do here. Looking upwards, Graham can see a snowy ledge above the icy cliff next to him. A frozen waterfall hinders Graham's progress, as in warmer seasons it has washed away part of the path on which he is traveling. Um, we have a companion and a guide. This is normally where you would talk to them to have them say, Oh no, the path is gone, we'll have to climb. But Cedric doesn't have anything to say at the moment. It was the 90s, game design was still very hard. Um, there's two things here that look like they could take a rope. One is the remnants of an old tree poking out of the mountainside near an upper ledge, and the other is a rock overhang. Um, one of those is going to be sturdier than the other, and I'm betting that the rock overhang is going to be the sturdier one. Be careful, Graham. Now you speak. If we, uh, similarly, it's very unclear what to do here, and just as similarly, Cedric has nothing to say. If we try to collect the rope, we'll just go back down again, so apparently Graham's going to leave it for the next person to come through. And we have these little, uh, things to leap upon. And some of them are steady, and some of them are not. Let's try it again. There we go. That wasn't too bad. We're doing all right. We're doing just fine. Graham, help me! Whoops! Cedric! We have to go after him, of course, but we can't just fling ourselves onto that slope. We need our sled. And thank God they uh, did not force us to navigate this bit. It's, it's automated. I wonder if that was initially the plan and somebody realized that it was just way too hard. Drat! My sled is broken! <laughs> Priorities! <laughs> And also such lovely language. When was the last time you said drat? We need to bring that back. Everyone has to say a good dratting. Uh, what do we have here? A castle buried in snow and ice perches precariously atop a steep pinnacle. A shivering eagle perches weakly upon a small rock. Despite his own problems, Graham's heart goes out to the poor thing. Well, let's go talk to him. What's wrong, Mr. Eagle? I'm so weak from hunger. I haven't been able to catch any food for days. I can barely fly anymore. I'd love to help you. Let me see what I can do. Thank you. I need food. We will give him the last half of our lamb. Here, take this. Perhaps it will help you. And he eats it. Look how happy he is. You are a kind man to share your meager food with a poor bird, especially up here in the snowy mountains. I couldn't just stand there and let you starve to death. What kind of person would I be? You have shown yourself to be a kind, compassionate man, and I will not forget what you did for me. Goodbye, dear friend. I really like how so many adventure games are about meeting people who have, you know, problems of their own, like you have problems, and helping each other out. It's it's so wonderful and lovely and, you know, socialist. And it just, it warms my heart that we, we have so many um, game fantasies around the simple act of helping each other, you know? And, and then sometimes, Wolves come collect you and escort you into a palace. That happens too, I guess. <laughs> I am Queen Icebella, 
and you have entered my domain, I command you to kneel before me. Since both you and your friend over there... Cedric, there you are. ...have so thoughtlessly invaded my territory without my permission or knowledge, I have decided you shall both be put to death. Take him away, my pets. Well, I know what to do here. If there's one thing that video games have taught me, it's that when somebody heartless or cold is ordering me to my doom, you play music at them. Wait, my pets. It's pretty music, too. very lovely music. I've never heard anything quite that beautiful before. I think I felt my heart melting just a little bit. Just enough to allow you a chance for your freedom. A vicious yeti has entered the area and taken up residence in my prized crystal cave. So far, I have been unable to extricate him from either the cave or my territory. If you can rid me of the yeti, I will release both you and your owl friend and you two can continue on with your journey unhindered. You may rise now. I wish you luck in defeating the Yeti. If you succeed, you will have my undying gratitude. Go with him, Sir Grey Wolf. Show him the way to the Crystal Cave. You may go now. Sir Grey Wolf will we lead the way. Which one, though? They're both grey. Well, I guess this one. What do they call the other one? He has pink eyes. Maybe he's Sir Pink Eye. Sir Grey Wolf and Sir Pink Eye. So, how about that weather, huh? Does it, does it snow a lot here? I guess it, it probably does. Queen like Ice Bella. You gotta figure there's probably ice more often than there's not ice. So, so the weather's kind of what it is. Hey, is that the moon up there or the sun? I, I wouldn't normally ask, but I'm kind of on a time limit. My family's in danger and it, it's a whole thing. And I don't have very much time before... Wait up, I'm coming. Yonder is the Yeti's cave, or the Crystal Cave. There's where you'll find the Yeti. Well, we should probably save our game. And now I'm paranoid, okay, about saving too many saves and suddenly not being able to save anymore. Hi, Cookie. Hello. Um, you can either walk up through all this, which is horrible, and you can keep falling off a ledge, and it's... I, I don't know why they made the ledges fall off a bowl when you can't. That's not it's not skill based if you're if it's a painted background that you can't zoom in and move around and I mean you're just at that point penalizing people for clicking on the wrong pixel. But you can get there by using a hand on the cave. Aha. So thank goodness for small favors, I guess there. And now we have to go very quickly. We gotta get rid of a angry, vicious yeti. And we don't really have a lot to work with. The wand is still useless and almost out of magic. The amulet is passive. The cloak we're wearing, I don't think the hammer is going to do much against that big guy. I similarly do not think a tambourine will impress him, nor a piece of wax or a leather pouch. I doubt he wants a harp, and I don't think the key's gonna do any good. But we do have a custard pie. Maybe he's hungry. Maybe he can't see. Ha <laughs> ha! And he fell off a cliff. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you might think that now would be a good time to leave and go get Cedric go on with our journey. You would be wrong. Through the yawning entrance of the cave, Graham could see many beautiful crystals sparkling and flashing from within. 
The Ice Queen has had her heart slightly, ever so little bit melted by our, our music and has decided to give us a chance to save this beautiful precious cave to her. Precious to her is this cave. One particularly brilliant crystal catches Graham's attention among all the other glittering crystals in the cave. Crystals flashing and sparkling and reflecting off the new Roche waterfalls cause Graham to gaze in awe at the dazzling spectacle before him. So the best way to continue nurturing that fragile, tiny seed of trust and hope that we planted in her heart is to vandalize her favorite cave. We're just gonna take a hammer to this thing. So very gently, Graham hits the beautiful crystal several times with his hammer until it breaks loose in one piece. He carefully places it among his other possessions. Why would we do that? I don't know. It's there. I'm sure it won't be necessary later and we totally just did it on a whim. It certainly seems that way, doesn't it? Oh, good. So we can, again, zip past all the terrain by talking to the wolf. I see that the Yeti is dead. Queen Icebella will be pleased. Follow me. So do you... Do you have, like, a lot of sports in your kingdom? How does that work? Like, maybe all the wolves play sports ball? Like, football or soccer or... What do wolves play? Do wolves play fetch? Do you play a lot of fetch here, Sir Grey Wolf? I'm coming. Ah, oh, good. You have returned in victory, I presume? Yes, Your Majesty. The Yeti is dead. You will no longer be a scourge upon your realm. Are my friend and I free to go now? Yes, I keep my promises. I want to thank you for ridding my mountain domain of the horrible Yeti. Please rise, King Graham. I know who you are, and I have been informed of your quest. I do wish you luck against the wizard Mordak. I guess Cedric must have told her. You two may go. We wish you well on your difficult journey. Sir Grey Wolf will show you the way out of the mountains. Thanks, man. We're becoming good friends. We're bonding over sports, weather, walking slow. I do like that Graham just unquestioningly kneels before her and doesn't try to one-up her or like, uh, excuse me, I'm a king too, or I don't kneel for anybody, you know, or none of that. Just, okay, you're in charge here, I kneel. <laughs> Which is really the wisest thing to do whenever you're in a situation like he is right now. What do we got? Grime's duty is done. The large gray wolf sits in silence, blocking the passage back to the Ice Queen's palace. Let's go, Graham. I'm cold and I want to get out of here. Fair enough. So if you did not get the crystal when you fought the Yeti, I think you could go back and get it now. And then you get this, which is a perspective nightmare to try to navigate. Oh, good, he falls. All right, come on. Oh my god. Why, why would they make this so difficult? It's just pixel, 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 pixel. Find the right pixel, hunt the right pixel. Here we go. Whoa! Graham, look out! Look at his eyes! <laughs> Yoink! Just go back down! You're, he's got that hole right there! It's... Why? Why did he catch you? There's a nice little village here. And a nest in the far background. We have been picked up by a giant two-headed bird, also known as a rock. R-O-C? 
we are in a nest and I don't know if you can see it because I don't have time to use the eye on it. There is a little sparkly gold thing next to Graham. Really struggling to pick it up. There we go. Graham rescues a lovely golden locket from the clutches of the rock's nest. And that egg hatched and the two little babies. Hi, nice birdie, good birdie. Gucci, Gucci, goo. <laughs> Hang on, I'll get you out of this. Our friend carried us off and they were left to fight over our cloak. The little baby birds will go hungry or bird. Not even gonna stop and say goodbye. Gray, where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. You'd never believe it, Cedric. You'd never believe it. So that was fun. We're out of the mountains and we are now on a beach. Beach, 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 beach. Okay. Graham notices a rusty iron bar lying on the sand near the bottom of the winding path. Cedric isn't listening to Graham. Let's get that iron bar. Let's go south. There's a boat up there, but let's see what's down here. This is pretty. It's like half of a ship. A makeshift house fashioned from the bow of a wrecked ship occupies the south end of a small narrow beach. Cedric seems as curious about this place as Graham. The ocean's cold water seems to lap hungrily towards the small ship house built against the steep cliffs of the narrow beach. Isn't this a funny house, Graham? What kind of person would live like this? I would. That sounds awesome. It's really pretty. Probably not well insulated. Graham pounds on the door but finds it bolted from the inside. He can, however, hear activity within. Oh, look, it's got like a, a what do you call it? A, oh, man, what's the head they put at the front of the ship? I'll think of it later. Look, there's a bell here, a ship's bell. And we can jangle it. Who are you? What are you doing on my beach? I am King Graham of Daventry. And I'm on a journey to find the wizard Mordax Island. I seem to be stuck. I don't know where to go from here. Eh, what's that you say? Can't understand a thing you said. Gotta speak up, boy. Now get on out of here. Okay, so because he's hard of hearing, he's just not going to help us and unable to communicate with us. Sure, sure. That's, that's, we couldn't possibly communicate with our hands or anything like that. Sit down and draw, draw the story. Maybe he's just really impatient. Look, Grand, there's a bow here. Maybe we can use it. Sure. The narrow beach at the base of the steep rocky cliff widens here somewhat, while the chilly ocean continues to beat relentlessly upon it. A cascading waterfall, though very beautiful, nevertheless cuts off further travel to the north. We're going to save here because um, in a second, Graham notices a small hole in the bottom of the old sailboat. Put some wax in that hole. Graham firmly wedges a softened piece of beeswax into the small hole in the boat's hull. Hopefully the wax will hold and make her seaworthy. I feel like the speed is slowed down. Um. Oh, I know what I was saying. Well, I was like, what was I saying? So we're going to push the boat out to sea and we're going to get hit with the dreaded copy protection. Um, this is, I think this was added, um, in 
the later remake of the game. I don't remember having to do it in my version. And I actually kind of hate it because in addition to failing it three times in a row on one of my previous attempts to do a Let's Play for this game, and if you fail it three times in a row, the game just continues, but you can't win it at that point. Um, which you don't get to try it again, nothing. This is pretty brutal. But uh, in addition to that, it also completely breaks the story because the whole story is that Kristen's wand is useless and dormant in your inventory until the very end when you do something to change that. And now here it's like, Graham's energy has suddenly run out. Use Crispin's wand to cast a spell, giving Graham more strength. Cast a spell how? Graham's not a wizard. He doesn't know this stuff. It's, like I said, it was it was added later as copy protection. I'm 98% I'm sure. And it was added badly. So, okay, the, the snake here is a T... This symbol is a Q. This is a R. And this here is a G. I don't know if I got that right. There we go. I don't know what was going on. Aye, aye, Captain to cause me to fail it three times before it was like one of the symbols just would not register properly. I'm gonna go south one. The ocean is like the desert in that you uh, there's endless death surrounding you on all sides if you try to go out of bounds. But there is one thing that we need to visit. And that is Screen East, I believe. This lovely island. Look, Graham, an island. Perhaps we should explore it. I think we should, Cedric. Very pretty. Graham, I don't like the looks of this. Me neither. Yoinkus! Graham, help me! Oh dear. Boing. Hello. Where did you find him, Minota? We found him on the beach. Isn't he luscious? Yum! I don't know. He doesn't look like my type. What do you think, Krulina? I think he looks too old and tough. I like my meals to be young and tender. Don't be so picky. I'm tired of fish. I haven't had a man in months. The harpies aren't paying any attention to Graham at the moment. We have to offer them something interesting. So what about our harp? Yes, you did. I saw you steal a man off a raft just last week. Oh, he doesn't count. He was already picked over by the time I got to him. Ladies, ladies, please. What's he doing? What's that thing? I don't know, but I want it. So she flies, and we hand it up to her wisely. <laughs> hey, that's not fair. Let's get her, girls. <laughs> there is something shiny here, half hidden in the coarse island grass. Graham notices an old fish hook. While keeping a sharp eye out for the harpies, Graham quickly bends down and rescues the fish hook from the ground. And then we skedaddle. Oh no! Poor Cedric, having been seriously wounded by vicious harpies, he now lies moaning and in pain upon the sandy path. Graham, help me. Cedric, where do you hurt? Everywhere. Poor thing. Let's keep going. 
Our boat is here, but before we leap in it, Graham notices a large conch cell lying delicately upon the sandy beach. Let's grab that. It might be useful. Graham bends over and picks up the beautifully colored shell. And then we put Cedric delicately in our boat and go out to sea. Well, we need help. We can't just keep uh, sailing onward. We've got to get somebody to help Cedric. So let's go back to that elderly man on the beach. Maybe he can help us. I mean, obviously he still can't hear us, but that shouldn't be necessary to communicate the gravity of the situation. So let's hop out and go jangle the ship bell. You still here? Please help me. I need your help. I can't hear ya. I really hate that we can't just show him Cedric. It's obvious what's wrong. But we have a shell, so we'll give him the shell. What's this? And he puts it in his ear. What were you wanting? My owl friend is hurt. He was wounded by the harpies. Wounded by harpies, you say? Bring him into the house. I'll fix him up. Good as new. Why did we need words for that? But regardless. Lay him on the bed there. These poultices should fix the litter feller up good as new. And sure enough, they do. I'm feeling better already. Tell me what was in those poultices. My employer would be very interested. Eh? What was that? I said what was in those poultices. My employer would be interested in them. Gives from the sea, lad. Gives from the sea. Ain't nothing special. You just gotta know how to use them. I don't think he'd find them particularly interesting. Now, son, what was it you was trying to tell me before? I was trying to find out where the wizard Mordax Island is. He kidnapped my family and is holding them hostage. I must get to them before it's too late. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about that. He's a nasty one, that Mordax. I wouldn't want to tangle with him. I'd try to talk you out of going there, except I can see you can't leave your poor defenseless family unaided. I can enlist someone who can lead you straight to his island. Follow me outside. He has a whistle. Pearl, this man needs your help. He needs you to lead him to Mordax Island. It's a real emergency. Mordax holding his family hostage. Pearl can't speak human talk, but she's agreed to help you. Just get on your boat and follow her. Aw. Cedric and I want to thank you for all your help, Mr. Um... Don't worry about who I am. You just get on over to that there island and take care of your family. Aye, aye, sir. We're off. Come on, Cedric.
And there's Pearl is leading us through, I guess, the safe uh, way to Mordax Island. If we tried to do this ourselves, we would get eaten by a sea monster. The uh, the ocean map, which is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, five by three, is surrounded by pointy, sharp death. A few hours later. So again, we have a nice time segue. It's not just like it's right across the beach from. Oh no! Watch out for the rocks, Graham. Brace yourself, Cedric. We crash our boat. It was a nice boat. I liked that boat. Help me, I'm caught. Oh, help. Are you all right, Cedric? Well, let me see. I'm fine, Graham. Just a bit ruffled is all. A bit shaken, Cedric anxiously takes stock of their unsure situation. A crude set of stairs has been carved into the rocky cliffs of Vordax Island. Above them, a narrow winding trail leads on up into his castle. Oh dear, now what? Poor Graham's boat has been dashed to pieces against the jagged rocks of Mordax Island and is now completely useless. A dead fish lies on the rocky beach at the foot of the stairs. Unfortunately, nothing can be done about the wrecked boat. It appears that Graham is stuck here. Well, again, if I have learned anything about adventure games, it is that dead fish are your best friend, really. There is no better friend than a dead fish in an adventure game. Um, it kind of looks like that's a way to go over there, but that is just a trick of the um, background. There is only one way forward, and that is this way. So we will go this way. I don't like this place. It's creepy. You have these two monstrous statues of grotesque, distorted serpents phase each other across the narrow trail leading to Mordak's castle. The bizarre castle, seeming to rise up out of the very rocks of the strange island like some sort of grotesque growth, beckons yet repels at the same time. And it's interesting, I'm not quite sure what this, these bits next to the surface are because they almost kind of look like fingers curled around the cliff. I'm not sure. Um, so this seems ominous. <laughs> if you vandalized the um, Ice Queen's cave, Crystal Cave, her beloved Crystal Cave, then now is where you would use this to not die. We blew out their eyes. They didn't give us a new description. Fine, be like that. We'll just leave. Well, it looks like there's no way in. Let's turn back. Come on, Cedric. The strange tower castle, so close now intimidates Graham as it towers threateningly before him. There is no way in through the front door, but Graham notices a small stairway leading down to another trail which winds around the left side of Mordak's castle. It looks like he has a service entrance. And if we could just get back there, Click, 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 click. There we go. See? Dead end. Let's go back now. No, I'll figure this out. Graham notices a rusted grate embedded into a stone platform of Mordak's castle. Cedric perches nervously as he surveys the surrounding area. The twisted and deformed shapes of the island's rock seems to grow like strange weeds. 
King Graham, heavy of heart, searches far and wide for his beloved family who've been stolen by an evil wizard. And with that, I'm actually going to go ahead and cut this video um, for a couple of reasons. One, I don't want to cut midway through the castle. It will take more than 15 minutes uh, to finish. And then the other reason is I need to queue up something because, um, well, you'll see. Um, so for right now, I must leave you. Once again, this has been King's Quest V. My name is Anna Mardal, and I will see you in the next video, which will also be the last video for this game. We will we will finish it out. Um, thank you so much for coming along with me on this. Uh, I, I appreciate it. It means so much to me. I know we've had a lot of technical difficulties, um, but it's 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 been really easy to keep at it because I've been excited about showing this to you. So I hope it's as fun for you as it has been um, challenging <laughs> for me. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.